local pensions. Local pensions need to have their pensions separated from the contracts. So when the contracts come up again, pensions are not part of them. So the city of Coventry, the city of Cranston, can, can say to the police and firemen or whoever is in that pension plan, hey, we're changing your pension too. That's what has to happen. There's a, there's a bunch up there. I just hit the highlights. Educational accountability, explicit state laws for cities and towns, the right to privatize, the right to lay off people. All these kind of things have to be passed. So the key is, and I just put the number 20%, the key is that, and I did, we did this, by the way, in 2005 and 2006, um, several representatives, Jim Davey, John Laughlin, introduced a bill, which, which we had actuarial numbers, which I still have a copy of, from Rosemary Galoogly, that said our city of Cranston, on the hard course of these changes, could have lowered property tax, I think it was 12%. That's not including the right to privatize, the right to fire, all these kind of things that you don't have to go to binding arbitration about anymore. But we need to set it so that we lower property taxes another 20 percent to say the big cities. I mean, in that way, what well, that might be different for Little Compton, it might be different for another smaller city. But then you, you can lower property taxes. Folks, listen to me clearly at this one point. I mean, it, it is this serious. If we don't do this now, the, the area from Warwick to North Providence, from East Providence over to Johnston, in 15, 20 years, is Detroit. Yep. Yeah. It's that serious. I'll give you, I'll just give an example. A house in Warwick, I had a friend of mine who's just praised at 770, he couldn't sell for 550. But even if he sold it for 550, it's a present 770, so he has a property tax bill of about $12,000. So it's $1,000 a month. In Fort Collins, Colorado, it'd be $2,500. So someone who buys a $500,000 home and pays $12,000 on property taxes basically has another mortgage. And someone making a very good income, now, nowadays, because you, could, you have to actually say what you made and write it down and so forth. And so that's what has to happen. Property taxes have to come down. What happened in Detroit was they knew this would happen. They had to know. And they just let it happen. And if you look at a price chart of houses in um, Detroit, I can put it up here. I can't put it up here, I guess. There it is. It, it would go like this over something like 1950. Everything went well. Everything was going good in the 60s. They should have been a right to work state then and moved the Saturn plants out and kept them in Alabama, all of them, and then what was it? Soup. That's what happened. That's what happened in Detroit. I have friends, and by the way, you couldn't escape it if you couldn't escape it if you're in Westerly. Because in Dearborn, Michigan, in nice executive houses, I have friends who have bought a $1.7 million home seven years ago, it's worth eight hundred thousand. You can't sell it. So this is gonna to happen to Rhode Island. There's no reason why it wouldn't happen. It's happening to Rhode Island. Next uh, slide. So we've got to get these things down. Now, I've been home for seven, eight years, I guess it is. I grew up in, I grew up in Rhode Island until I was in my 20s, and I went away because I couldn't find, you know, I couldn't make the kind of job I wanted here in Rhode Island. But I came back home, I became the mayor. We've been talking about TF for Green Airport since I've been home. <laughs> I know some people don't like it to be expanded who live nearby. I lived in Memphis, Tennessee for nine years. And listen, you know, the difference between Rhode Island and Memphis, Tennessee, first of all, nobody would live in Memphis, Tennessee without air conditioning. It's not even a pretty city. I mean, I love, I love it. I met my wife down there. It's a wonderful place full of wonderful people. A lot like Rhode Island. Down there, they argue about barbecue. Up here, they argue about pizza. I mean, it's a wonderful place in many respects. But when Fred Smith, who runs Federal Express, says, I want a big an airport, there's never, there's never been an article about a complaint. People just see the planes coming in. Jobs. When, when I was on one of the first flights direct now stopped to the Netherlands when they expanded the airport from Memphis. And then two weeks later, the city's covered with tulip bulbs. The price of tulip bulbs goes down because they're coming back up from the Netherlands and the bulkheads. I mean, it's, it's an Adam Smith invisible hand story, but it, it, it happened. And they just keep expanding. If you went there today, you drive around the airport, you see these logistics hubs. Uh, Heartland Trucking, MS Carriers Trucking, Swift Trucking, logistics companies. More tonnage goes out of Memphis, Tennessee. We have a great location too. And, and it has to be expanded to 9,100 feet. It will create jobs. You can't call people with a real company and say, land in Boston, I'm in Rhode Island, without them thinking if they're in Austria, if they're in, if they're in Texas, that you don't have a real city or a real state. You need a real airport. It's about jobs, and ports are about jobs. How many times have I heard this? I'm sorry if you live in North Kingston. I'm sorry if you live on the water. I've been down to Charleston, South Carolina, just to investigate. 
They see jobs. In Memphis, Tennessee, by the way, there's actually a train that goes right through the middle of the city. Think of a train going right through 1A all the way down Rhode Island, stopping traffic 10 times a day, and nobody beeps because they see coal, they see steel, they see cars piled up, and they see jobs. We think, we think the be all end all is a parking garage at the Warwick Airport. <laughs> it's crazy. So we need jobs. Go ahead. <laughs> We have to then, by the way, once we, you know, the, the mistake Reagan made, he had a great plan, so he had a plan, you know, he was going to beat the commies and he did it, you know, he was going to lower taxes, he did it, he was going to do away with some of the regulation, he did, he was going to cut spending, get rid of the education department and the oil complex, and he did it. We're going to stop by getting rid of these things first, that was the mistake, and then we can eliminate the car tax. When I came home, I couldn't believe there was a car tax, I just was like, oh my gosh, how do people in Providence, the mill rate's like 77. It means if you have a $26,000 Honda in Providence, you take $6,000 off, you pay $1,500 a year? The average family of four making 45 grand? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why is everybody putting up with it? So we gotta eliminate that. We, that that's a regressive tax. We gotta eliminate the capital gains tax. It means jobs. <laughs> That's job. It's jobs. Family farms shouldn't be split up because of an estate tax. And then, as I say this, it seems kind of simple, but you know, if if we're competing with Massachusetts in Connecticut, right next door, why would we have a cigarette tax? And I don't smoke, but why would we raise a cigarette tax to a buck fifty more a pack in Connecticut? Why would we tell? Why would we tell like the, the guy who runs a, a a quick stop lube or whatever on the border of Connecticut or somewhere nearby? Nobody's going to come anymore, right? And that's what we're doing. I mean, and, and by the way, within a month, it's like, oh, ta taxes uh, collections for cigarettes are lower than they expected. Because there's this thing, this thing called the elasticity of demand and supply. People change their behavior. And we, we're not in Los Angeles where it takes five hours to get out of the state. Everybody leaves the states for their job every morning. Now, I'm not a big advocate of smoking cigarettes, but people like to pick up some peanuts, too, and get their gas, and it's just stupid. You'll get more, the tax for, for cigarettes should have been set 15 cents a pack below our neighboring states. Just, that's it, and, and that's what I mean about Massachusetts. If they lower, we go one penny lower. If they have a flat tax on income of 5.6%, we're 5.5. If they get a tax holiday in August, I mean, if you looked at my four years at Cranston, you read every article, and I have every article in my mother's basement, just to keep in mind. And one day I went through it, and I said to myself, I said, you know, the biggest complaint about me among the Democrats, the surpluses were too big. Honest to God, the surpluses were too big. Now, by the end of the year, there won't be any left, but the $24 million left behind me. And, and, and look at this map. We got, I, I hate to leave you over here with this thing, but I gotta come over here. You know, being a right to work state, Simply means that simply means that you can work at a union place but not pay the dues if you don't want to. That's all it means. No one gets slapped in the head. No one dies. But no Toyota factory will be built in a non-right to work state. It won't happen. They won't do it. Nobody at you know one of these big caterpillar tractor places is gonna do this anymore. That's why they're in Alabama. That's why they're in Tennessee building cars. Take a look. We could be Switzerland. Switzerland, as it used to be the banking in the world, we could be Switzerland. Let's face it, folks. Another article about we're going to be a biotech center. I'm going to puke. Our workforce, my dad was a toolmaker. We are a blue collar workforce. We know how to work hard. We know how to move things. And we know how to make things. And we know how to ship things. The deep water port right out the window here somewhere is the closest spot of a deep water port to, port to Europe. I mean, folks, we need to stop this. We can do it, but that's what has to happen. I call it the game changer because when I look at this map, I was stunned again. I mean, I'm still stunned. You have to go that way to here, that way to there, and hundreds of miles to Virginia to get to another right to work state. Now that would be a battle. That would be a Conley and Conley battle. That would be as big as it gets. 